edition of our Super Sunday here at the AFC Under-23 Championships. Four matches will be taking place today from Group B and Group C. It is Reem and Roshan coming to you from the Thamasat Stadium ahead of the 5.15pm local kickoff time. Yeah. Uh, Saudi Arabia versus Qatar. Roshan, uh, Felix Sanchez hoping to get all three points against Saudi today as he was denied a win versus <laughs> yeah. Syria at stoppage time. Mm. You know, after going through 90 minutes thinking you got this in the bag and then suddenly to be denied that full three points, how does that psychologically affect you? Yeah, it, it can have an effect psychologically, especially after the game. Immediately after that, you will feel like you know you've let a great opportunity slip, especially with uh, you know younger players in these situations. It's something that Felix Sanchez has addressed as well. He's spoken about it, and he said yes, the players were disappointed uh, after that. But it's his job and the job of his coaching staff to get them uplifted for the games that are coming up. The message was that even if they won the first game qualification wasn't secure. Yeah. Even if they lost the first game, they still have two matches after that to try and get themselves back into it. So they're trying to stay nice and positive coming into this and uh, looking to try and adjust and adapt their game plan to, uh, to the side that they're going to be coming up against today. Yeah, it's a different game altogether versus Saudi, a team who like to dominate. What sort of challenges will they present to Qatar? Yeah, I think, you know, Saudi Arabia, from what we've seen so far in this competition, in that game against Japan, they're a side that like to press up high. They don't want teams to play out from the back easily. They'll try and put you under pressure in those situations. And Saudi Arabia themselves like to have possession of the ball. Okay, against Japan, they're facing a, a, a side that's perhaps of a slightly higher quality. So Japan were dominating possession a little bit more. But in this game, I expect Saudi Arabia to be the side that have a bit more of the ball uh, and will try and control the tempo and try and dictate the tempo of the game. And they won't allow Qatar that much time and space to play out from the back. And we saw Qatar in their game against uh, Syria, when Syria started to press up against them, put them under pressure, that's when mistakes started to creep in uh, into their game. So I think that's what uh, Qatar will have to watch out from the Saudi Arabia side. The fact that they will like to play a high pressing game, a high tempo game, um, and also with the players that they have, Abdul Rahman Garib, uh, will be in the lineup. It's, he's someone that Qatar will have to keep a lookout for and make sure that they've got a plan in place uh, to try and keep him quiet. According to the lineups that have come out, though, have they got a plan already? Because you did mention that Qatar have a couple of changes versus Iran, yeah. who's only got one change. In well, the squad. more than uh, more than a couple of changes, five changes, in right. fact, uh, for this uh, Qatari side. And you know, fresh legs are coming in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Felix Sanchez perhaps feels that he needs to give an opportunity to some of the members of the squad here uh, after what happened uh, on match day one. Fresh legs come into the side, and I've got that here. I mean, uh, Nasir uh, Al Arak comes into the team. Uh, Khalifa Saad Kalaf, Mohammad Imad. Uh, Jasim Gaber, we saw him come on uh, in that uh, in that game, in that first game against against Syria, yeah. and uh, Abdel Rahman Mustafa comes in. Those are the five changes uh, for this Qatari side in various positions on the pitch, in defence, uh, in midfield, and in those uh, attacking areas as well. For Saudi Arabia, uh, just the one change for them, uh, and that's in midfield. Ali Sadiq Al Hassan comes in for Nasser Al Omran. Uh, that's just the one change for them, and I don't blame Saad Al Sherry. Again, we've seen sides who have put in good performances, not wanting to mess it around too much. Yep. Uh, with their lineups and uh, expect a good strong uh, Saudi Arabia lineup here. All right, simultaneously, there's also a kickoff uh, happening at Sokla mm. at the Tin Sunanan Stadium from Group C. It's Iran versus Korea Republic. Iran, of course, uh, got a point off the defending champions in their opening game. Do you see them springing a surprise against uh, Group C favorites, Korea Republic? I think this is going to be a difficult game for Korea Republic. I think Iran uh, have impressed me. That first game against Uzbekistan, I think Iran actually had the opportunity uh, to go on and win that one. You know, I think uh, they were very aggressive. They created good goal-scoring chances. They couldn't quite put away their opportunities. I especially remember Ali Shojai having a great chance in that first half. Uh, Saad Manesh as well had an opportunity. Uh, in the second half, uh, Mohebi had a chance running onto the ball, again created by Saad Manesh. So they had chances to win that game, uh, but the performance overall was, was very good. And they'll be hoping to take that into this match here. And you know, again, uh, just the one change in terms of their starting lineup from that last game. Uh, Gaebi comes in for uh, Shojai. Um, and so, you know, Gaebi, when he came on um, in that second half of that game, in the first match, uh, match day against Uzbekistan, changed the game for Iran uh, and certainly helped them in the attacking quality. One of the strengths of Korea Republic, of mm. course, is uh, the depth of squad. Mm. And they have made quite a major <laughs> yeah. squad rotation today as well, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, seven changes for Korea Republic. And we touched on this in our, our preview to today's matches um, that we did yesterday. And again, they're one of the sides in this competition, one of the nations, one of the squads that have that ability to change it up and still maintain that quality. Some of the notable changes, Jong Woo Yong, Lee Dong Jun, who scored the winner for them against China. They, the, both of them come in. And uh, Cho Kyu Sung as well. He had 14 goals for Anyang in uh, K2 last season, so he comes in to uh, um, take his place up front for them.
All right, thanks for that, Roshan. A very exciting 90 minutes ahead of us. And as always, we will be back later on with the full-time report.